You've seen us expose online predators. I didn't come here for anything physical. Men using the internet to arrange for sex with children. She invited me over. Now, the footage you haven't seen. Are you going to call if you're coming or if you're not? The defendant will commit future sex offenses. From the heartland of America, more surprise confrontation. BS talk got you sentenced to prison. Bizarre behavior. What were you doing with your pants there? You ask if she does anal. It's a question. And busted suspects with nowhere to run. Or just be sharp. This is Predator Raw. When we first started this, I thought, uh, you know, we'd do two, maybe three investigations. And at some point, uh, we'd have nothing but video of me pacing in a kitchen someplace. Guys would get the message and they'd stop showing up. We had been to locations for investigations that were near big metropolitan areas. We wanted to find out if this was also a problem in America's heartland. So we went to Dark County, Ohio, uh, right near Greenville, Ohio. I think the county has a population of something like 13,000. And we set up to see what would happen. By the time the investigation was over, we learned that even in this little town in Ohio, this was a problem. Put it down, put your hands in the air. Turn around, turn around. I'm gonna read to your rights. Do you have any questions? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in court of law. Go ahead take a seat. Watch your head, okay? Watch your head. In this case, as uh, in the previous investigations, we worked with the computer watchdog to refer to justice. She's got the guy. It's decoys going to chat rooms, posing as 12, 13, 14, 15 year old kids, uh, home alone, uh, open to the idea of a, a sexual liaison in a meeting. Uh, but they go into chat rooms and they just wait. And they never make the first contact. And sometimes, in a matter of minutes, a man is approaching them online. The online chat becomes sexual, and the next thing you know, a meeting is set. I have a family. Oh. Come on in, man. I just whacked my toe on the banister. Where are you? I hit my toe on the banister. And, oh, I gotta go get a band-aid. Now I'm bleeding, and I'm gonna get shot if I bleed on the rug. Hang out at the bar for a second. I'll be right back down, all right? All right. Sorry. Because we were out in the country, these guys in some cases had to drive a couple hours or more. And Alonzo Wade was one of those guys. He turns towards the door and he's doing something with a zipper. Now, I still to this day don't know exactly what his plan was. He might have been getting ready to go outside to relieve himself or he might have, you know, been plotting something else. But he did pull down his zipper before he turned around and walked uh, to the bar. How are you tonight? Alright. Do me a favor and uh have a seat right over in that stool. Yes, sir. Now what were you doing with your pants there when you were heading towards the door? Uh were you hiding something in your pants? No, there ain't nothing. Look, I'll show you everything. Hey. Well I don't you didn't see oh, everything. Well but... no, but well, I just now my zipper came down. Excuse me. Right. Well you brought quite the selection tonight. Yes, sir. What do we have here? Well that's mine. All of this is yours. Yes, sir. A lot of these guys are just trying to do their best to get out of a bad situation. So they're trying to make up their story on the spot. Alonzo Wade tried to tell me that uh, this alcohol was for him. And you just thought this would be a nice warm place to drink it? Well, no, sir. She, I was talking to her online. She invited me over. Yeah. And who is she? Uh, what is it? her online name? Bush Girl or something like that. Bush Sucks Girl. That's it. That's it. And who are you? Alonzo Hampton Wade. I'll show you my ID. Alonzo Hampton Wade. And Alonzo, how old are you? Forty. I, I told her how old I was. Yeah. And how old is she? She told me she was fifteen. Fifteen. Yes, sir. I just wanted a place to drink. I wasn't going to do nothing. You didn't have any place to drink, so you thought you'd come here. Yes, sir. Just to hang out and drink. Yes, sir. And you're going to drink? No. Some six. of that was going home with me. Some's going home. Oh yeah. Were you going to give any to the 15 year old? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't do that. And you I got a 15 year old daughter myself. You've got a 15 year old daughter yourself? Yes. I just wanted a place to sit and drink. Why couldn't you drink at home? Well, my daughter's got her friends there and I don't like drinking in front of her. So you thought you'd come over here and drink in front of another 15 year old no. girl who's not your daughter? No, that's not my intentions. 
my intentions was to not well, well yeah, my intention was to drink in front of a fifteen year old girl. Yes, I see what you're saying. Does that make any sense? No. So why don't you tell me why you were really here? To drink. To drink. Yeah. All right. So now let me ask you this. You're here in this house where you believe a 15-year-old girl is home alone. You bring the booze into the house. Right. How would you feel if while you're over here, some 40-year-old guy is at your house bringing booze to your 15-year-old daughter and her friends? Probably the same way you feel right now. You tell me. I'm the same, probably the same way you feel right now. So why is it okay for you to do it? It ain't. I don't know why I did it. I just wanted to party, that's all. So just party. Yeah. And there's no 40-year-olds to party with. Well, Nobody who's grown up who you can party with in the whole state of Ohio. Well, I didn't say in the whole state, but go where I'm from. Alonzo Wade tried to tell me that he was not there to have sex with a, with a 15-year-old girl. Now, at some point, he cracks a little bit and says, well, maybe he would. And I say to him, well, what is it? Yes, no, maybe so. It so, appears yeah. to be clear from this transcript that yeah. you are open to the idea of having sex with this girl. No. It, well, appear, yes. Would I? No. Or maybe. All right. Maybe. What is it, Alonzo? Yes, no, maybe so. Maybe. Maybe. So maybe, maybe you would have had sex with this girl. Maybe. If she wanted sex and I was drunk enough, I'm not going to say I wouldn't. I'm not going to say I would. Did you? I can't say what I would do when I'm drunk. Well, you know, i got to tell you that I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Oh, I understand. And we're doing a story yeah. on adults going on the internet right. trying to hook up with teens. Right. Now, you can see the cameras coming in and right. everything. Right. As we're finishing the interview, I say, you know, what do you think should happen to you? I should go to jail. Put it down! Put your hands in the air! Turn around! Turn around! The Dark County Sheriff's Department uh, in Ohio was running a parallel investigation, so when I finished talking to the men who arrived at our hidden camera house, uh, they would leave and they would be arrested. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present during questioning if you wish. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. What do you do for a living, Jenny? My brother and son. Why don't you just tell me what you do for a living? I'm a teacher. You're a teacher. And what grade do you teach? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Are you going to call if you're coming or if you're not? We wanted to do something different in Ohio, so we found a very, very young-looking 19-year-old actress who would be in the house with us and pose as the on-site decoy. I'd really like to see you. We didn't think James Rutherford was gonna show up. He had engaged in a long, explicit, suggestive webcam interaction with our decoy, showing little parts of the body. Later though, he said, ah, I'm not sure this is the right thing to do. I was really looking forward to it, that's not fair. I'm so bored here. But all of a sudden, this red Corvette comes down the driveway and parks right around back. Now, the way we had it set up was that we, the guy would park in front and walk around back. But he drove right up to the back door. So we all had to scramble into position. OK, gotcha. I'm familiar with that approach. Come on in. The door's open. Where are you? Oh, I'm just going to go finish getting ready. I'll be right there. Where are you? I'll, I'll be right back. Just sit at the bar and I'll be right there. Come here. No, I promise I'll be right back. No, come here. I'll be right here. Come here. Wait, right here. I'm patient. Actually, I want you to come here. That's what I thought. Rutherford alluded to the potential of this being a setup, perhaps a, a police sting. He even talks about, you know, maybe this is morally not the right thing to do as infatuated as he said he was. But he does it anyway. And I think it speaks to the level of addiction and compulsion some of these guys develop online. Would you have a seat right over there, please? Good. What are you doing here? I just came to hang out, really. You came to hang out? Yeah. And you came to hang out with I had a feeling this was what was going on, honestly. You had a feeling of what was going on? That this was some sort of setup. A setup. A setup for what? I don't know, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't I didn't come here for anything physical. I just was bored. I'm going through a divorce. I just wanted to get out of the house. Honestly. 
So you couldn't go to a sports bar to watch a game, or you I've couldn't been doing go to that all weekend, man. And so you thought you'd come here to this house. I knew it wasn't a good idea from the get go. Who did you think you were going to meet here? Just this kid I've been talking to. This kid. I know she's a kid. How old? Thirteen, fourteen. Thirteen. And how old are you? Too old for a 13, 14 year old. Too old. And how old is that? 26. 26. And you thought it was okay to come over here to visit a 13 year old girl home alone? No, I really didn't. But you're here. I know. I don't know why. Now I know, before he walks in, what Rutherford does for a living. Uh, he even talks about it in his chat. We think we have it nailed down. But you never really know. I mean, he could have said that just to gain the confidence of a, a young teenage girl. So when I talk to him about what he does for a living, I don't say, are you a... I ask him, what do you do? What do you do for a living, Jim? I'd rather not say. Jim? I'd rather not say. Why don't you just tell me where you work? Who do you work for? I'll get to that in a minute. No, I'd, I'd really like to know. I'm sure I'm on TV or something right now. Why don't you just tell me what you do for a living? I'm a teacher. You're a teacher. And what grade do you teach? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. So you teach kids about the same age as the girl you were coming to see. Yeah. I would never do anything. I don't know why I'm here. Can I go? I couldn't help but point out to him that he was coming to visit a girl who was basically the same age as the kids he taught in a private Catholic school near Cincinnati. And as a parent, as a journalist, as anybody, that's bothersome. You were on your webcam, showing off in front of this 13-year-old girl. And the conversation you had with this girl. Oh, that's bad, I know, I know. I don't know why, I need help. You're cute too, definitely have a pretty face. For jailbait, laugh I knew out. it was wrong, I knew it was wrong. I'm sorry. I could be your teacher. Would you flirt with me? She says, wink at you and stuff. Hee hee, okay. Cute. You'd like that. I'd be flattered. Not like that's a bad thing, innocent enough. I knew I shouldn't have come. I knew I shouldn't have come. I'm sorry, man. I knew it. I. At some point, he turns this corner and it goes from an interview with me to a virtual counseling session. I am going through a divorce. My wife Thursday told me she was leaving me. I don't know what spawned this. I mean, I was just in an Ohio chat room, an adult chat room, and this was a week or so ago, and she started talking to me. Yeah, but that doesn't make it right for you to I know. have this kind of I a discussion. Know. And I shouldn't have. I Look, guess... divorce is tough. Everybody gets that. Yeah, I'm no, not gonna... Nobody's going to make fun of that, right? Well, I'm... Okay, it's not good. On top of that, what kills me right now, I've thought about this a lot for years. Maybe I should just stop. Maybe I should get counseling. Maybe I should get help. And I always thought, well, it's not that big a deal. I've never taken it to this step. I don't know if this week has just pushed me over the edge. Look, you're not the first guy to have an issue with the internet and sexually charged conversations. I know. Addictions and compulsion. It's not. I mean, we see it a lot. Instead of me being arrested, is there some way you can help me? Well, I don't know that I can do that. I mean, will you, will you give me some of the information here and tell me what exactly is going on? Do you want to know what's going on? Do you ever watch television? Do you ever watch Dateline NBC? Oh, damn, I've seen one of these. You've seen one of these? Yeah. You know, that's, and that was what, one of the reasons I thought, why am I doing this? This could be a setup. I could. But let me get this straight. You've actually seen our previous programs on computer predators. I didn't think I was a predator. I wasn't out, I wasn't coming up here for anything physical. I know I talk, look. That was, like that was like I fantasy. That was like fantasy. I know, but everybody says that. But what's going to happen if I'm not here and the 13-year-old girl is? You got all charged up by seeing I know. this I know. gal on the uh, webcam. I Could I kiss you anywhere? I'm sorry. That'd but be I fun. Man, I know it's on TV. I kiss it. I'm not a psychiatrist, but I've sensed that uh, these guys were relieved to get this off their chest. Um, to... to, to 
tell folks what they've been going through. Sheriff's Department, stop putting your hands on your head. I think you do have a problem. Obviously. And you've admitted that, okay? That you have talked to minors before, 13 years of age. Do you masturbate while you're doing this? Sometimes. Okay. I have, yeah. So you're so driven by this, okay? But sir, and it's not okay, like just it's... just listen to me. Well, well no, okay. I think I, I feel like I should at least tell you. It's not like it's... I go on there specifically looking for little kids. What ultimately happens to these people is not for me to decide. And in spite of... Um, you know, what is an explicit chat and, and uh, what looks like uh, would constitute a felony, a serious criminal charge, you know, what happens to them is up to the criminal justice system. I mean, that's, that's not up to me. But to see somebody who could hurt a child or expose a child to an early sexual encounter that could scar that child for the rest of their life and be caught and deal with the consequences of that, I think, is a, is a positive thing. Do you see any action? Yeah. Did you go to the war? Yeah, it was the first one was there when it first happened. In Iraq? Yeah. Now, as a member of the United States military, there's a code of honor. Mm -hmm. Did you break that code tonight? Um, I'm going to say in some ways, yeah. Your heart is always in your throat uh, uh, for the first couple, and then, of course, you're anxious. I mean, you're, you're approaching somebody you don't know, uh, and as much as we've researched uh, this person's background, you just never know what's going to happen, and you have to be prepared. So, yeah, you're anxious every time you do it. That never goes away. Did you find a place all right? Yeah. Bring your bag and come on over here for a minute, will you? Wow, I knew that was gonna happen. You knew what was gonna happen. This. You knew what what's this. You have a seat on that stool there if you would. In Ohio, uh, we saw really for the first time multiple guys say that they had seen one of our past three investigations. And it did surprise me. Because I'm thinking, well if you saw the previous show, you know, what are you doing here? Ronell, do you ever watch television? Mm hmm Do you ever watch Dateline NBC? Yeah, and I've seen this on TV. You've seen this on TV before? Pretty much knew this was going to happen. You knew it was going to happen? Yeah, what made you think that this was, in fact, going to happen? Well, because for one, which I think is kind of, I think is really, you know, is kind of like misleading in a way, but for one, I just knew, I mean, I could tell because of how she just kept, um, Trying to see if I was really gonna come, if I was really gonna come, you know. So you smelled a rat. Yeah. But you came anyway. Yeah. Why? Something I did. Something you did. Yeah. You feel sorry for a lot of these guys, you know, and especially if you're talking about somebody who served in the military, if they served perhaps in the Iraqi War, and you know, you know, what what are you doing here? But then you go back and read the transcript and you see what was said, how it was said. What do you do for a living right now? Um, I just got out of the military. You got out of the military? What branch? The Navy. The Navy. Yeah. And where did you serve in the Navy? Um, well, at first I was stationed in Washington. In Washington? And been deployed like two, three times. Did you see any action? Yeah. Did you go to the war? Yeah, it was the first one there when it first happened. In Iraq? Yeah. Now, as a member of the United States military, there's a code of honor. Mm -hmm. Did you break that code tonight? Um, I'll say in some ways, yeah. In some ways, yes. Yeah. But in other ways, I would say no because I really haven't, you know, actually... But, Ronell, you're a grown man. Yeah. Showing up with alcohol to meet a 13-year-old girl home alone. How does that look? After you reread that transcript, you feel a little less sorry for these guys. You say, well, I'm in for whatever. I'm not scary. 
I don't have no girlfriend, you should be my little mammy. What does that mean? That was just a little joke, dog. Little joke. I didn't know if she took it serious or not, but I ain't. She talks about how she doesn't want to get pregnant. You say, I wouldn't get you pregnant. She bought it up, I did. Yeah, but you're but here. Yeah, she's the one that bought all that up. I just... She wanted to drink, so I got that. Uh, if you wanted to have sex, I would, okay. I know that's what you wanted me to say, wasn't it? So you were game if she was game, basically. Uh, I couldn't say 100% that I would. What percent could you say? I would say it was more like a 50-50. A 50-50 deal. So maybe you'd have sex with her, maybe not. Yeah. This is the part where I say I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. And the cameras come out. And we ask if there's anything else you want to tell us. So if there's anything else you want us to know, we'd like to hear it. Uh, no, not really. It's just, you know, I ain't rude. I mean, if I, I f okay, I realize I made, uh, coming here was a mistake. But, um, good thing that it didn't progress to none further. It was a good thing that we were here and a 13-year-old girl was not. Right. I'm not going to say, say that anything would happen, but it just, I don't know, I just apologize if I offended anybody, but. You have the right to remain silent, you understand that? Say yes or no. Yes, sir. In every investigation, once uh, we finish uh, talking to the uh, potential predator, they're arrested, they're taken to a processing center, and then they're taken uh, to another area where they're interviewed by police detectives. Do you know how old the person was when you were coming to visit today? Uh, yes, sir. How old? She told me uh, 13, sir. You pleaded guilty yes. to solicitation of a minor for sex. It was a plea. It was a plea. What then are you doing in this house less than a week before you're supposed to be in court and go to prison for doing the very same thing? Kevin Westerbeck walks in and he's very short and so I, I lean over to the bar okay. to talk to him and I said why don't you have a seat and, and he doesn't want to do it but uh, I said no please and so he jumps up on the on the on the bar stool hey how are you well, you want me a favor and have a seat right over there on that stool please yeah he's like I just sat next to him at a sports bar or something we we're talking about you know a hockey game mm -hmm. And and uh, I said, what are you up to tonight? Come on, she asked me to come over and please have a seat. Relax. Come on. <clears throat> Who uh, asked you to come over exactly? Hmm? Who asked you to come over? Destiny. Destiny. And how did you meet Destiny? Hmm? How did you meet Destiny? On a computer. She said hi and stuff. She said hi and stuff. <laughs> And, and who, do me a favor and just keep your hands out here. No, fine. Okay. <clears throat> Before Westerbeck walked into the house, uh, we knew that he was to be in court four days later uh, to go before a judge and to be sentenced for doing the very same thing he was doing on this night. Now, Kevin, you've had some contact with the law before. That's correct. Tell me about that. This child, uh, there was a child, uh, I forget what it is. Child solicitation? They said I came out to meet some girl, I guess. So let me get this straight. You were accused of doing the very same thing that you're out doing tonight. I had no intention of this. All right, let's go back to the other case for a minute. You pleaded guilty. Yes. to solicitation of a minor for sex. It was a plea. It was a plea. You, right. you pleaded guilty. Correct. 
And you got sentenced for that plea, correct? That's correct. 11 months? Correct. In fact, next week, on Thursday, you have to go to court. Correct. And they're going to decide whether or not you're going to become a registered sex offender. Yes. And then you're going to go to prison. Correct. What then are you doing in this house? Less than a week before you're supposed to be in court and go to prison for doing the very same thing. Stupidity, because I didn't expect this to be any, be like that. So what, it's my fault? No, it's not your fault. I'm not saying that. He told me at first he was just there to talk to the girl, to hang out, what's wrong with that. You know, almost challenging me as to why I would question him. And then I start to read from the chat log. She says, I like kissing. You say, would you get naked? I just don't want to get cold, she says. You say, have sex? Now, a moment ago, you told me this wasn't a sexually oriented conversation. That was a lie, too, wasn't it? I was just talking. Just talking. And, you know, little by little, his story starts to fall apart. It would be fun, then, okay? You say, then, I'm big. She says, really? Yeah, how? Then you give the dimension of your penis. That's not sexual? Just BS talk. Just BS talk. To me it was. Cause okay, so that anything. BS talk got you sentenced to prison once already. And less than a week before you're supposed to go to court and prison, you are here in this house trying to meet a 13-year-old girl home alone. I'm stupid. I'm, I'm weak. I'm, I'm, it's just... I'm just uh, I have no intentions of having sex with her. Yeah. How I can you say that? It's what it says, but I didn't. Why should I believe that? Because I'm telling you the truth. You didn't tell me the truth uh, when you answered the first six questions I asked. You lied then. No, I didn't plan on having sex. Well, come on. What did you plan on doing? I'm just going to plan on meeting her, say hi, how you doing, and that's hi, it. how you doing, and that's it. And that's it. So, less than a week before you're supposed to go to court, where you're probably going to be designated a registered sex registered offender, sex, uh, yes. and then you're going to go to prison that's correct. for 11 months, That's correct. after pleading guilty to solicitation of a child for sex, you just figured, oh, I'm just going to pop in and have a nice little conversation with a 13-year-old girl. That's your story? That is my story, sir. It never fails uh, during one of these investigations that two or three guys show up at the same time, and, and of course that was the case with Kevin Westerbeck. They're whispering to me that you know there's another not potential predator about to walk in. I was just finishing with Kevin Westerbeck, but I didn't want to rush through it because it was an important interview. So I finished just in time. Uh, Westerbeck leaves through one door, and the next guy comes in the other door. Sheriff's Department. I want you to take a seat in that chair over there, in the back, the black chair. The sheriff's office would take the handcuffs off and everything like that. Not one for the road? No. You understand what I'm, uh, I mean by I that? I know exactly what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. And that was not my intent. I learned my lesson the first time. Obviously not. No. Right? Obviously not. Well, I wasn't coming You're chatting with the 13-year-old female about your penis size on the internet and you drove about, what, an hour and a half to get here to meet a 13-year-old female in the middle of the night who you knew, by looking at the chats, her parents weren't home. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. When the judge in the first case hears that he's been arrested again, you know, for doing the same thing, he's, you know, classified as a, uh, a sex offender. I am required in this hearing to make a determination as to whether or not I believe, based upon the facts presented, the defendant will commit future sex offenses. In this case, you've made it very clear, Mr. Westerbeck, as to uh, uh, whether or not you'll commit future offenses. This court will make a finding, and I make this finding beyond a reasonable doubt, that you are likely to commit future crimes based upon the evidence before the court today. With that determination, the court will make a finding that you are a sexual predator. I don't want to have sex, but... Well, what is that? What do you mean you don't want to have sex? You talk about 
No, it's not just kissing. You talk about showing her your cool. Here's my, here's my, here's my wide. Yeah, I don't just need the wide. We need the type right around the corner. They've been busting them down there. We need a oh, type. Just, so just tell a photo in now. Zoom in. The there. police are able to monitor what's going on, so they're not surprised when the guy leaves, because I'm not communicating with the police. So there has to be a way for them to kind of figure out what potential threat they're going to face once this man walks from our investigation into their investigation. Hello? Hello? Is anybody here? Yeah, come on in. Just sit at the bar for a second. I just cut my toe. I gotta put a bandage on. I'm gonna bleed on the rug and my mom's gonna kill me. Where's your mom? Right here. It's impossible to know exactly how each and every one of these men is going to react. What I try to do is say, please have a seat over there. I like to see where their hands are. Just try to keep a good look into their eyes and see, you know, where this is going to go. Most of the time, because we have the element of surprise, the guy does sit down. Sometimes they get a little rangy and they want to walk around, but for the most part, they sit and talk. Would you do me a favor? Why don't you have a seat down the other side of the bar there, please? Right on that stool. Okay. Please sit down. How can I help you tonight? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Now, did you bring condoms? Yes. You did? Mm -hmm. Put them on the counter, please. Now it what? Was, I didn't think it was already on me. It was already in your pocket. I was a tiger. This guy, who was a grad student from a nearby university, um, really didn't think anything even close to this was going to happen to him. Now I don't know how often he had chatted with young girls online before, but he was one of those guys who was really caught off guard. It was fake, I think. It was fake. Mm -hmm. What was fake? Girl. The girl? Mm -hmm. And who were you here to meet? She said me, Sarah. Sarah. And how old is Sarah? She was young. Young. How young? Pretty young. Pretty young as in what age? Fifteen. Fifteen. What is a 27-year-old man doing at a home? Trying to meet a 15-year-old girl who is alone. It is not right. Then why did you do it? I shouldn't do that. I mean, help me I to understand. Help me to understand what you were thinking about here. Uh, I was. I was bored. You were and, bored. Mm -hmm. And I want to meet a girl from online. You wanted to meet someone from online. Well, if you're bored, why don't you just go see a movie? Read a book. Why engage in this sort of talk on the internet? What do you think would have happened if you had come in here and there really was a 15-year-old girl? What would have happened? I don't know. He... Well, I can tell you what it sounds like mm -hmm. was going to happen. Often, uh, these guys will try to spin you. Uh, and they think that they have a good story that'll explain why they're there. And if they come up with a good enough story, they're going to walk right out that door and face no consequences at all. But I've got the transcripts. And once I start reading those, that typically opens them up. And that's when they start saying, okay, here's what I did. Here's what I was up to. You have a pretty explicit talk here. Yeah. So you're old enough. Yeah, I think so, she says. When will your dad be back? Monday. Cool. We have two days, you say. Mm -hmm. it is, I, don't, I don't usually do that. It is, it is uh, embarrassing to me. It's embarrassing to you? Mm -hmm. Why is it so embarrassing to you? You weren't embarrassed here when you were talking about it on the internet. When you are on the internet, you usually be comfortable. I don't want to have any problem, you know. Kissing is okay. Yeah. And I, I... But you also say, in the next breath, 
have you ever seen a blank, meaning penis? Mm -hmm. I have on the internet, she says, then you say, so do you want to see mine? Do you want a sex movie? She says, do you have those too? You say, I don't have, but I can borrow one. And then you say to her, don't say anything to anybody that I'm coming. It sure seems like you knew what you were talking about here, and you knew what you wanted from this 15-year-old girl. I don't want to have sex, but... Well, what is that? What do you mean you don't want to have sex? Kiss. You talk about... No, it's not just kissing. You talk about showing her your penis. This was really the first time where we saw a number of guys raise religion as a defense. When I confront them, they say, well, I really wasn't going to go through with this because of my religious nature. I don't do that again. You won't do it again? No. This is first. This is your first time? Yeah. Against my, my religion. It's I, against your religion? Today I choose to come here or not. I So I decided to come. But I shouldn't have come. But why did you? If you're so religious, if you knew it was so wrong, why did you walk into this house? I don't know. When I first started talking to him, he he stuck to his story. You know, he, he thought the girl was older. He didn't think there was anything wrong with what he was doing. Uh, and he wasn't breaking any laws. And, and that went on for a while until, you know, I started confronting him with the transcripts. And then suddenly he admits, well, I had talked to my college roommates about this, and they did tell me it's against the law here in the United States. He was here from another country, I believe, Turkey. Do you know that it's against the law? My friends told me, but I don't know. I have been for three years. Uh, last year, I was in a dorm. Uh, my friend just told me. Your friends told you that, in mm -hmm. fact, it was against the law to do what you did tonight? Mm-hmm. But you did it anyway. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you ever watch television? Mm -hmm. Do you ever watch Dateline NBC? No. I'm Chris Hansen, and I'm a reporter for Dateline NBC. It's a news show. And we're doing a story on computer predators. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can't will be used against you in court of law. Once you're these right guys are arrested, right. they're evaluated you're and they're monitored. You decide any time you exercise these rights, not answer your question to make any statements. You understand? You ask her if she's horny. What's wrong with that? You ask if she does anal. It's a question. In this state, depending on the circumstances, that is against the law. Do you get that? It's against the law to say it on there. It's against the law to solicit an underage girl for sex. You there? I'm gonna go up and get ready, okay? Okay. Wait at the bar for like five minutes and then follow me up, okay? Okay. Okay. Do me a favor and uh, just have a seat right over there on the other side of the bar. Okay. How's it going? Right. Did you find a place to park okay? Yeah. Yeah, let's have a seat. What's your plan for tonight? Nothing really. Nothing really. Mm -mm. This was one of those guys who just won't admit that anything they said or did was inappropriate. To hear them tell the story. This is all fantasy. Talking about this online isn't really doing it. It's just freedom of expression. It's fantasizing. We're not really going to follow through on it. And so that they shouldn't be held responsible for it. You ask her if she's a virgin. I ask everybody all kinds of stuff. It's just talk. Do you sleep naked? What's wrong with what's asking questions? Well, some of the questions are pretty graphic. You gonna be naked when I show up? Legs spread and I will blank you right away. Okay. 
Okay, so I said that stuff. You ask her if she's horny. What's wrong with that? You ask if she does anal. It's a question. I know, but you're asking a question to somebody who identified themselves as an underage girl. And in this state, depending on the circumstances, that is against the law. Do you get that? It's against the law to say it on there. It's against the law to solicit an underage girl for sex. Yes. That's not what I... If that's what it was, I'm sorry. I didn't know. He was just going to stick with his story. I mean, there I had it in black and white that the girl he was coming to see was 15. He talks about how she shouldn't tell anybody about this. He could get in trouble, but it'd be worth it. His blood is pumping. His heart is pounding. Uh, he's so excited. And yet, when I read some of this back to him, he just won't admit that this was illegal, immoral, or anything else. And how old is this girl you came here to meet? I believe she's 18. 18? Mm-hmm. And what made you think she was 18? Because I thought she said she was 18. You want to try again? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. But that's not what she told you, is it? I don't know. Well... You can say that. Okay. But I have the transcript of the conversation. Okay. And right up top, she says she's 15. Okay. How old are you? 21. 21. And why did you think it was appropriate or legal to come here to meet a 15-year-old girl home alone? I don't know. You don't know? No. You gotta have a better answer than that. I didn't think she was 15. But that's not what it says here in the transcript of the chat. I read the whole thing, so you might as well just tell me. I don't know. I really don't know. I thought she was 18. What's that say right there? What number is that? 15. 15, okay. Go ahead, sir. I don't remember. But isn't that a little convenient that all of a sudden you're sitting here talking to me and you don't remember? No, it happened probably last night. A whole 24 hours ago. At some point during his interview with detectives, he did admit that uh, he wanted to meet a young teenage girl for sex. I'm going to read you your rights. If you have any questions, you uh, you tell me, okay? Can I just be shot? You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Yes. You understand what kind of trouble you're in here tonight? Yes. What? Tell me what kind of trouble you're in. Probably jail. No. What? What did you do wrong? I showed up to solicit a minor. For what? I guess sex. Sex.